Hi, big fella. What's going on, guys? Hanging out with Casper in the pond here, and we wanted to go over one of the uh, most common questions that people do ask is, well, what do you do if an alligator attacks you in the water? Well, best advice is have a good relationship with whatever deity you prefer, because you're probably gonna die, okay? <laughs> I, I really, I don't, I don't mean that as a joke. It's kind of funny when you say it out loud, but um, no, really, if you get attacked by an alligator in the water, your chance of survival is very small. Now, there are a few things that you can do that are going to enhance your chances, but um, again, I can't repeat this enough, you're probably not gonna survive, okay? Um, there are things, we'll go over them, but the first thing is don't ever enter the water where alligators are present. You know, that that's your most important one. If you want to uh, swim with an alligator and see what it's like, come do my tour. Come get in the water with me and Casper, hang out with us. We do this in a safe way here in Florida. Uh, here at the Everglades Outpost, you can come hang out with us and do the tour. But um, as far as in the wild goes, do not swim with alligators. Uh, you know, don't go try this on your own. That one, I say it all the time. The best way to avoid it, or the best way to handle a problem is avoid having the problem in the first place, right? So don't go try this out there in the wild. Um, but let's say that you do end up somehow accidentally you're in the water with an alligator. What do you do next? How do you survive? Um, this is going to depend on a couple different factors, right? And uh, so there's a couple things that you can do, and there's a couple things that you can perhaps see in the animal's behavior that's going to give you some ideas of how you should proceed, right? So if you were to just fall in the water and let's say you end up in the water somehow and the alligator is like, you know, if I, let's just kind of do an example here. So if I am way over here, reasonably far away and Casper is back there behind me and you're like, oh my God, there's an alligator over there. What should I do? Uh, the best thing you can do if it's not looking like it's interested in you, like right now, he's just, he's just over there, he's looking the opposite way. So like, let's say in this exact scenario, he's looking the opposite way. He's not interested in me. What should I do? very carefully and very quietly and let's say the shore is like right there just try to get yourself over and out of the water nice and quiet and carefully don't create a disturbance don't draw attention to yourself that works pretty well um you know it depends on how deep the water is and whether or not you fall and you splash things like that it's going to attract their attention but the idea here is you do not want to attract attention to yourself okay now, um, if you can slowly and carefully get out before he notices you, that would be ideal, right? Now, let's say he does notice you, he's looking at you, um, but he's still a uh, reasonable ways away from you, but he's definitely interested and he's facing towards you and maybe slowly approaching or something like that, but he's still a decent ways away. Um, you could, if it's close enough, you could try to like kinda, kinda doggy paddle and keep your movements under the water. Don't do this one. Okay, uh, this is how humans like to swim. We think this is the best way for a human to swim and it's the fastest way. It's also the way to best look like an animal dying that has no idea how to swim. When you're swimming like this, you are just flapping away and any aquatic animals looking at you like, wow, that thing has no idea how to swim. And Gasper, he's like, oh, I should go help him. He needs assistance. Uh, yeah, no, he's gonna come over because you look like you're drowning, you know? So you never want to swim like that. So let's say if the alligator, uh, if the alligator was far enough away, maybe you could kind of do that like doggy paddle, keep your, uh, keep from splashing, you know, keep your limbs under the water and kind of slowly get to the shore if it's really, really close, right? Now, um, the other thing that you can do too is if you go under the water, if he's on the surface like this and it's looking at you and it's paying attention to you, and it's again, it's far away, it's not close, you can go under the water, swim as far as you can, pop up, get a breath, go back down, do the same thing again. And the idea here is minimizing surface activity and especially splashing, okay? So when he's up on the top like this, he's using his eyes and his ears to track, and that's what he's gonna do. And so when he's up on the surface like this, he's trying to see you and he's hearing you splashing around and that's how he's gonna track your movement and follow you or something like that. Now, when they're up on the top like that, what they typically do is they just keep an eye on whatever they're after and they just make a beeline for it. Now, if that thing goes underneath the water, a lot of times they'll just kind of stop and they're like, okay, you know, and they'll just kind of wait for a second and see if it pops up again. Um, you see that, you'll see them do that sometimes out in the wild and they're trying to hunt something. So you can take advantage of that and if you can hold your breath and you can swim again this is one of those things where like you're probably going to die but these are things that are going to kind of uh possibly enhance your chances 
So again, going under the water, swim as far as you can, pop up, get a breath, do it again. And hopefully you can get some distance like that and get towards the shore. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, well, but don't they, don't they chase stuff underwater? You know, can't they swim underwater and attack? Well, yeah, they, they can, but they don't usually, and usually the water out there is very murky. They can't see anything. So what they usually do when they are hunting under the water, and just FYI, common myth, people think they can't bite underwater. Of course they can. You know, what kind of aquatic predator can't bite underwater? It doesn't make any sense, but that's a very common myth either way. So what they do when they're underwater, so let's say like if he was that close and he's trying to get me and I dove down and I go to do that maneuver I just explained, what he's going to do is he's going to go under two and he's just going to do this and he's going to feel around and i mean literally it is this it's not this it's feeling around this is how they go to hunt underwater they don't like have their mouth wide open and just like you know that that's not something that alligators will typically do um especially not in this kind of like inquisitive scenario where like you know your person he's like oh can i get this guy you know um so now, every once in a while, I've seen videos of crocs do that, though, okay? So, right now, we're just talking about alligators. Crocodiles, they can do some different stuff, okay? That is one of the differences between alligators and crocodiles. Uh, they do have some different hunting strategies. So, so far, I have never seen an alligator do this number. I have seen uh, crocs do it. So, uh, that's just one of those things right there. So, with the alligator, though, again, you fell in, you're doing this thing. If he goes underneath the water to try to find you, he's doing this. I've had them do it to me multiple times in the wild. Okay, so I've had wild alligators pop down and they're hunting me and they're trying to get me like that and they go underneath the water and they're just, they're just kind of feeling around because that's exactly what they're doing is they're feeling around. Once they go underneath the water like that, their nictitating membrane goes up, they cannot see as well and at that point they are relying more on tactile. So if you've seen me talk about this before, we can actually, let's just show you this. Come here, Gasper, come here. Need you, need your example, need your face, come here. Oh boy and if you've not seen my videos before he does know his name and he does come when he's called so if we look at his face he's got these little tiny black dots these are called integumentary sensory organs and so those i'm holding them up he's trying to like get out from under my hand he's not he's not like trying to bite my face okay even though it looks like it <laughs> but i'm um, holding him up and he's like no stop it um but yeah so if you saw those little black dots along his face those are called integumentary sensory organs and uh, they are super super sensitive to touch and pressure and in fact somebody did a study showing them to be 10 times more sensitive than the human fingertip really cool right so they use those to hunt underwater and mainly to hunt fish what they like to do is sit with their mouth open hold perfectly still where water's flowing wait for fish to bump them or come nearby and then whoop, whoop, nail it so what they're going to do in this scenario again if you went underneath the water and trying to swim away like that they go under and they try to feel with those sensors for movement and that's what they're looking for okay and again this is why you want to try to keep your movements as calm and controlled as you can on the surface and underwater you don't want to like you know flail around and create a lot of disturbance because they pick up on that so again they go under they kind of feel around like this and if you're not really close they can't pick you up you know they can't feel you now if you are really close they can feel it you know like if he's like right here underwater if i move see that that was all underwater movement on my hand and he swung out to bite the movement of the water i didn't have to do anything on the surface and he just went for an underwater so but that's if you're really really close right so ideally in this situation you would be able to get under and swim away far enough where they don't pick you up uh with that tactile sense under the water pop up get a breath keep on doing this number you know and then eventually hopefully you get to shore you probably won't though okay now let's say he's really close so let's say like you know you, you get in you're like oh crap it's right there you know what, what what do we do here so um again you're probably gonna die i keep on saying this but i don't think people realize like this is serious stuff like this is really dangerous and i don't want to give people a false sense of security that's why i keep on repeating myself because i don't want to give people that false sense of security where people watch this video and you're like oh okay cool I know how to handle an alligator attack. I will now put myself in a situation where this will happen because I know how to handle it. No, you're, you're probably gonna die. You know, this is one of those things because people ask about it. And I'm honestly apprehensive to explain this because I don't wanna give people this idea that they now have the power to evade. And it's like, you're probably not gonna make it, dude. Um, yeah, sorry, but uh, I will go over it though. Just maybe it'll save somebody at some point you know hopefully and at the very least satisfy a lot of curiosity because people ask about it a lot but again don't go betting your life like i know what to do now i can put myself in a dangerous situation i, I wouldn't normally because i know what to do so don't do that okay so anyways let's say he's real close 
and you turn around, you're like, oh man, he's right there. What do I do, right? So what you'd want to do is you want to take your hand and you want to put it up underneath the jaw, like you just saw me do a second ago, and you want to push him away. Now, I'm not going to really push him hard because he's a sweetheart and we, we love him, but what I would do is get underneath the jaw right here and then just push him away, okay? And just give him a good like, whoa! Now, it's not a punch because you're not trying to hit him, you're trying to push him, okay? And usually what happens once you push him away like that, they will back off and uh, it, it does work pretty well. I've done that in the wild. I've had wild gators come at me like that in the water and I've been able to push him away like that. Now, something really important I do wanna cover here though, is if you were to hit the alligator, um, you might have heard this before, like uh, there's been a couple instances where somebody's getting attacked by an alligator and they turn around and they hit the alligator and it lets them go. Um, now let's break this down. Why, why does that happen? Did they hurt the alligator? No. This is something really important to understand too, is that you are not going to physically hurt that animal with your bare hands. I don't care if you're Mike Tyson. You punch him in the face, you're gonna break your hand before you actually cause him any significant injury, okay? I'm gonna say that again. You will break your hand before you cause him any significant injury. These things are insanely powerful. Their pain tolerance is insanely high as well. If you ever seen videos of them fighting, uh, when they're in a fight, they will rip each other's arms off and not even flinch, like literally not even flinch. So as a human striking that animal, you're not gonna cause it enough pain to really deter it. So what you're banking on here is that you're scaring him away, okay? so. I guess we need to back up a second and understand the psychology here. So if you're a person in the water with an alligator, uh, what happens is his eyes right now, like let's say I'm a swimmer, right? Like right now I can stand up, this is high as I stand, but almost just got hit with a branch. But um, if I was a swimmer and I'm down like this and I'm swimming like this, his eye is only about an inch or two above the water right now. So if he's looking at me across the water, all he sees is this. And this looks like a small animal. Alligators do not normally see people as prey. We're not their normal food. And if you don't believe me, just consider the fact there's over a million alligators in the state of Florida. And with that many gators and so many people here, a thousand people moving to Florida a day, if they want to eat people, you'd have people dying every day. Okay, they're not out to get us. They don't see us as prey. They like to eat small animals, raccoons, turtles, fish, birds. And what size class are all those? About the size of your head. So when you're swimming, he sees your head, you're a funny looking duck, right? So that is where he will come after you, not because he's attacking a human, but because he's attacking what he perceives to be as a small animal. So they will absolutely come after you in that scenario. Again, not attacking a human, attacking what he would perceive to be as a small animal, right? So if he's coming at you like that and he thinks you're a small creature and then you were to suddenly strike out at him, whether you push him underneath, that's my recommendation because that works really well and that's the safest way to do it. Or even if you were to hit him across the top, which is much more dangerous, you're much likely to have him snap up and grab your arm, by the way. That's why I say underneath is a lot safer, but you can do it from the top and get away with it sometimes, but you are much more likely to have him snap up and grab your hand. Either way, if you were to strike the animal as it is attacking you or something like that, or even as it grabs you, there's been a couple of these, it grabs a guy and he turns around and he hits it and the alligator lets him go. And that's because the alligator suddenly realizes like, oh my God, this thing's a lot bigger than I thought it was and it's gonna put up a fight and they will let go. Again, not because you're hurting him, but because you're, you're scaring him. A lot of times this is investigatory, investigator, investigator, investigatory, whatever, you get where I'm trying to go. Um, it will scare him off because he's trying to figure out if you're prey, he's not sure, and he's trying to figure that out, right? So that's why a lot of times if you do strike them, push them, whatever, they will let you go because he is afraid and he's gonna let you go because of that, right? So that does work. There's a good one, um, just this past year, there was a guy that was swimming, he's training for a triathlon and he has a drone overhead and uh, shouldn't be swimming, obviously. And the drone is filming him as he's training and you see this gator just beeline right for the dude and it nails him. And as it hits him, you know, bites him and he turns around and he hits it and immediately lets go. Obviously he didn't hurt the alligator. It's a pretty big alligator. It looks like at least a 10 foot gator. And he hits it and lets him go. Uh, and that guy survived. Now, my understanding though is he did get like lifelong brain damage from getting like bit like that and it really messed him up. Um, but he did survive at least, right? So again, hit him, let him go, it's afraid. Now, the reason why I keep saying this and why I know this to be the case, not only because of the evidence given when they fight, how their pain tolerance is out of this world and we're not gonna inflict any amount of pain similar to what they can when they bite each other, 
But also, there's another story of a guy that I met. Um, he was swimming in Lake Okeechobee, and his friends were with him, and all of his friends were like, alligator! And the guy thought it was a joke, and he turns around, and there's an alligator. So he'd seen some of our videos. And so he went and he pushed him up underneath the jaw, and he pushed him away. And then it came at him again. This gator's not afraid of him. Okay, so that's what I mean. This one is not investigating. This is like a 12 foot gator. It sees him as food. That animal is big enough to see him as prey, which again is not normal. Normally, you know, gators aren't usually that big that people encounter and usually they do like small stuff, right? But in this case, it saw him as prey. It was going for him, it was not afraid. Came at him, he pushed it away. Came at him again, pushed away again. Came at him again, went to push. Hand slipped, grabbed his arm, <laughs> snapped his arm off right about the elbow. Okay, and just ripped it right off, swallowed it. And the guy swam to shore with just one arm left. And he lived. He did survive. Pretty amazing. Um, but, you know, that is one of those instances where, like, it didn't matter what that guy did. He could have hit it with everything he had. That gator was not being deterred by that. And so, what do you do in that situation? What he was doing. Try to push him away as many times as you can as you're trying to back up towards the shore. That's what I would do in that situation is just try to keep on backing up towards the shore. Try to keep on pushing the alligator away repeatedly. But again... Coming back to the idea that you're probably not going to survive it, you know, or at least not in one piece. That guy got lucky because the gator took an arm and it was happy with that arm for that moment. And it gave him that arm, bought him enough time to get to shore and actually survive. Okay, so it's a complicated topic, you know, um, and it's your, your life is on the line. So that's why, you know, we circle back to the idea that you just don't end up in there in the first place. Don't go swim with your alligators. Don't go where they are present. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times it's because somebody falls in them, you know, or... Um, unfortunately, a lot of times because there's a fed alligator that people have been illegally feeding them. You know, don't ever feed a wild alligator. Very important. They associate people with food. That's where most people get hurt by an alligator is because the gator was fed by people. And then they have to kill the alligator too, even if it doesn't hurt anybody. What we say is a fed, a fed gator is a, a fed gator is a dead gator. Sorry. The peacocks really throw me off. That's what that said. That's the peacocks. Um, but yeah, so a fed gator is a dead gator. Don't feed them. Gets them killed. Sometimes people get killed. But uh, in those situations, because they're fed, they will hang out underneath the dock waiting for people to drop food for them. And then somebody falls and it hits the water. And their first instinct is something splashes. It's food, you know. Um, even with him right here hanging out with me right now, he's just hanging out with me. If I were to see how quick he snapped over there to try to bite the splash. So that's what they do. You know, if it splashes, it's food. That's how they operate. So that's why it's so bad when people do feed them. They're hanging out underneath the dock. Somebody falls, boom, they're nailed, game over, you know. And unfortunately, too, uh, you know, people die, but then also the alligator gets killed. And then it gets labeled as an alligator attack, even though it's like, well, yeah, you, you fell on top of him and he's been being fed by people. Uh, you really kind of create in the, the worst situation you could in that kind of a thing, you know. So very, very sad. Now... Also along these lines too, talking about gators in the water and attacks and this and that. Um, people walking their dog by the water's edge is a huge one. We just had a lady that got killed last month. She's walking her dog. There's video of it. She's walking this little tiny, tiny dog. It's like a five pound dog right along the water's edge. That's like dangling food in front of a gator's nose. You know, you, you don't want to do that. And uh, that's why I, I say this all the time, never have kids or pets near the water's edge. It's, it's dangling bait right in front of their nose, you know? And there's been a couple instances of people getting grabbed because they have their dog there and their dog is obviously attracting the gator, the dog is prey. Um, there's also been ones where the dog gets grabbed by somebody and the person goes to try to fight the alligator for their dog. You're not gonna win that fight most times, guys. There is one video where a guy does because the gator's like barely five feet. It's like a, it's, it's a very small alligator. That guy saves his dog, but there was one, um, somebody that lived pretty close to where I was living, got, their dog got grabbed by an 11 foot alligator. And this lady tries to fight an 11 foot gator for her dog. Obviously didn't work out for her, ripped her arm right off and uh, she died. But what's interesting is the gator didn't eat her. Her body uh, minus the arm was relatively unscathed. Um, gator ate the dog, left her body. Didn't want her, just wanted the dog, you know? But either way, we're kind of going on and on here. So I'll just wrap this up guys. Don't go swim with wild alligators. If you want to come swim with one, come do my tour. All the info is on my website, crocodilechris.com. You can come hang out with us and be safe, but don't get in the water with a wild alligator. And, uh, you know, just, just be safe out there, guys.